Hello and welcome to a discussion with, I'm your host Brett Poirier and I have a guest with me today. I'm very excited to introduce a country music artist from up here in New England, but he's originally from Oklahoma, Houston Bernard. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Brett. Yeah, this is awesome. You know, country music is associated with the South. It's something I think people recognize as being Southern. You're up here in New England. What's it, what's it like up here in New England for country music? Well, I mean, just look at the evidence. I mean, uh, Zach Brown has sold out Fenway Park, you know, every year, well, except for this past year, <laughs> but, you know, three nights in a row, and Kenny Chesney at Gillette Stadium a couple nights in a row. I mean, there are country fans everywhere, so, I mean, and there's country artists everywhere, too, so. What is country music? What is it about it? Because I think that it is becoming a super popular uh, source of music and people connect with it. It's a, there's a feeling to it. There's a lot that goes on with country music. What is it about country music that resonates amongst people? Well, I'm not an expert. I, I'm just a singer. But what I've learned is that what connects is you know the truth, the storytelling, the emotions, um, the honesty. People love honesty. You're like a uh, good Johnny Cash song, though. You've been everywhere. Can you tell me a little <laughs> bit about your journey through the country and, and how you landed here in New England? Sure. So uh, my dad is from Oklahoma, and there's a lot of musicians on in, in my family. And he was touring, as musicians do, <laughs> and he met my mom in Massachusetts. Um, he was also a broke musician, so eventually he rejoined the Army, and they, they sent him up, and all of us, up to Alaska. And uh, eventually they split up and uh, we came back to Massachusetts. For someone who's never heard your music before, uh, what is something that they can expect? What's the, what's the vibe? What's the lesson? What are they pulling from your songs? Gosh, I, I, I'm not the person to ask, to be honest with you, but I, I will tell you this. They, there's a lot of variety to my music. I have a few albums out. My first uh, country album was more classic oriented and my second was way more party oriented. It's called Knockin' Boots uh, from 2015. And, and my third album uh, is called Lucky Man. And those are, you know, they're, they're true stories and um, still a lot of fun. Got some fun music videos we put to them. And uh, I've been playing in New England for, gosh, since 2012. So I, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've met a lot of people. And I really enjoyed being able to play country music in New England. Well, let's talk about that for a second. You've been uh, in a lot of different places. I always hear with, you know, musicians, it's like I've been on the road, going on the road, the trips on the road. What is the road? What's that like? What's that lifestyle like? Is there a big, uh, is, is all the glam, the glitz and the glamour, is it all what we all expect? What's the road like? Again, I have no idea what you expect. <laughs> but it's... Uh, for me, as an independent artist, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. You know, I'm booking my shows a lot of the times. I'm, I'm managing uh, professional musicians with a lot of skill, talent, and some ego. And I'm also, you know, renting vans and uh, making sure I have the right equipment and sound people and that sort of thing. And then I'm also doing a lot of promotion myself. So I'm promoting shows, so I've got to budget things. And, you know, sometimes things work, sometimes things don't, and you've got to keep rolling with it. And you know I'm I'm playing band leader, and I'm I'm running the whole show. So it's it's a business owner. It's a it's a father figure even sometimes when you have to uh, manage certain things. Uh, and then you're out there performing and trying to connect with people and tell your stories and have a lot of fun. So I think the biggest part for me is trying to keep up the energy to do it right, to do it well, and uh, to pace myself so I can have longevity. That's a part of it I don't think a lot of people expect is you're running a business and you're running something that has multiple layers to it. You're oh, yeah. dealing with a lot of the egos and a lot of the, and not just on your own band, you're dealing with probably egos of, you know, business owners that you're trying to get into their bars. You're trying to get into, you know, other artists are trying to get in. So what's that business like? There's so much I think it's involved uh, to be able to do that and then also perform must be so difficult. There are challenges, sure, but you know, it, it it weighs off with the, uh, balances off with the, the positivity of being able to do what you love to do. So, yes, there are some club owners that are completely out of their minds, disrespectful, uh, try to take advantage of you and rob you. Um, I, there's, 
I mean, there's a lot of that kind of negativity, but there's also like amazing people that really love music and want to support you and what you're doing and um, will communicate with you and, and treat you with respect. That's why I always have contracts. So there's always a borderline of like, this is what we agree to. You know, I, I, it reminds me of a story. I was, I was in Albany, New York, and I was playing at this one venue and we have a contract and the guy, the club owner, completely out of his mind. He's like, oh, so we're paying for your food too? I'm like, yeah, it was in the contract. Oh, I guess I should have read that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what contracts are for, man. <laughs> so, so, you know, you deal with silliness, but, uh, uh, you know, you could be running out of gas. I and mean, there's always those challenges. Uh, you know, I booked some hotels in, uh, I should stop naming these cities, but in Binghamton, New York, you know, and, and we get to this place and it's like, you know, this place was like, I called it the Fungus and Farts Motel. Like, it was not a pretty place. It smelled awful and I, I couldn't believe I put my people there. I, I felt awful about it. And, but I learned from those things, you know, you try to, to improve um, and everything that you do in all aspects of this, of this business. And still you want to be able to create. So there's, you know, I'm wearing different hats constantly. Um, but I, I get to do what I love to do, so I have no complaints, and, and I'm blessed to be able to do it. What was the moment, I think everyone at some point in their lives wants to be a star, wants to go on the road and sing and perform, and I think everyone had that moment where something about them, they, they had that they wanted to perform for people or something. What was it for you that took that childhood dream and made it a reality that now you're supporting your life via music? What was it for you? I don't even know how to answer that. Um, <laughs> well, you know, when you're younger, when you start out, you, you see, you, you know, idolize or appreciate different performers and you're like, oh, I could do that. And you're performing in front of the mirror. And it's just something that, uh, you know, many of us do. Um, because they're speaking these songs that are your language, you're relating to these things. And then, you know, years go by and for me personally doing it and with the struggles and this and that and learning, uh, being a big star is not my goal. I, my goal is to, to be happy doing what I love to do, which is singing entertainment. If that means, you know, large audience or small audience, uh, house parties or a Zoom party on a live stream and like I get to do that. There are people listening to what I'm doing and, and I've got to focus on on that and that's really truly where happiness comes from. Not not these big grandiose you know ideas of being Bruce Springsteen in a stadium and <laughs> you know like uh, so I really try, just try to focus on that and being happy you know being happy with what you have not what you don't have. Well, let's talk about, you know, you said the, the Zoom parties, and that's obviously a very new concept. That's not a thing that people, I don't know if Bruce Springsteen is doing any Zoom parties right now, but it's something <laughs> that, you know, obviously the pandemic coming in has changed the way that music is taken in. It's changed the way that people hang out, that people can be around each other. Right. How has that affected music, and how have you combated with that? What, what types of things have you started doing to bring music to audiences? Well, I, I went through a bunch of phases because, you know, I do about 100, date, 100 live dates a year. So when COVID hit, it was like, okay, well, I have all of these fans that are, uh, and friends that are just kind of scared and that my music can bring some sort of peace or at least take them away from the reality of what's going on for a little while. So I was doing live streams every day and I would change from different social medias and I was doing it every day and I found myself really getting burnt out, giving so much time, uh, effort. And then I was also like, okay, I'm not doing anything interesting here or I just trying to keep people company and you know, basically keep myself company too because this is what I do. If I'm not singing, if I'm not performing, you know, I'm going a little crazy. <laughs> So it went from there and, you know, I kind of had a lazy summer. I actually got to spend more time with my family and I got to spend more time writing. So I, I try to find the positive in those things. Um, you know, we had some really awesome shows booked. We had big events. I had a festival in Alaska. So it would be the first time I'd go back to Alaska in a while. So trying to get over the challenges for me personally, the challenges of, okay, I sh was supposed to be doing this, but now I'm doing this. Let's try to make the best out of this. And so when it comes to live streaming, which is the best way to connect with audiences, I was able to start doing that. 
And then by the fall, I really started figuring out what worked for me, uh, something regular and consistent that people who like my music could uh, look forward to. So I started doing Music Mondays, which you air, thank you. And um, you know, I'm doing TikTok Tuesdays, which is a, a slightly different show where I'm actually doing covers instead of just a couple covers instead of just all my original music. So you know, I'll take some requests there. And then I'm doing a lot of live stream shows. For instance, this this Wednesday I'm doing uh, a show in in the UK. It's this CES event, and what they do is an actual Zoom event where you have audience members and you can see them. And I actually had a meeting yesterday, and they're the, the people that organize this show. And it's cool that you can see them. It's almost real. We'll see how it works out. It'll be my first real Zoom performance. But they're also warning me, OK, we have this person who's going to be saying this, because that's what they say at every show. And it's going to be, a, you know, there's going to be people talking and, and all of these things, kind of like a live show, except I don't have an amp to turn up so I can you know, overpower them. So it'll be an interesting kind of like living room situation. So that feels a little bit more live for me, where I can connect a little bit more and I can see the face at the same time, multiple people. I think there'll probably be like 30 people in the, in the Zoom. So I, I'm looking forward to those types of things and I think people are doing it right. Um, as far, like I think that's a really good way to connect with people. So there's a lot of different variety. You, you just, try to test things out, see what works for you, but you know, there's nothing like a live show, so. And that's one of the things too, is I, I noticed like on Music Mondays, you do a really good job of reading the comments and communicating with people as you're playing the music, you play a song and someone will comment, and you know, you're, you're interacting with people, it's obviously very different, but that's also really hard. People don't understand how difficult that is for you to be in the moment, playing songs, trying to come up with the next song, the next topic, the next thing, and you're also re reacting to people, calling out songs, people are you know, saying funny comments to you, and, and what's that like to try to like read comments and you know, you're, you're dabbling in now social media and this trying to uh, you know, TikTok and everything. What, what is all this like for you? Well, it's, it's definitely a learning curve for some things. Uh, <clears throat> but I have to correct you there, Brett. I'm, I don't know if I'm doing a good job at it <laughs> because if I do read comments while I'm singing, I mean, I have a uh, tough enough time sometimes just to remember the own lyrics, my own lyrics to the songs. So if I'm reading while I'm singing, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a, where was I? You know, yeah. so <laughs> I really have to, you know, you have to figure out. I want to give feedback as much as I can. Music Mondays, I'm under, a, 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 I try to keep it 30 minutes, so I'm under, you know, time restraints as well. So there's a lot to it. And it's all kind of compacted in this one situation. You don't have a band backing you up to hide things or, or a live audience with a lot of noise to try to like, OK, they're not paying attention. They're you know drinking or whatever. So it's very focused on what you're doing. So it, it challenges me to, to do better, to really like connect, have my idea of what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to do. Uh, and also try to be able to pay attention to the audience as, as much as possible. And, and answer some questions or um, potentially take requests or whatever. What I found is uh, for Music Mondays in particular is to have a set list beforehand and ask people to, to send in the request beforehand so I have it all set up. Um, it doesn't always work out that way, but uh, if you have some sort of a structure, as you know, uh, it, the things will move smoothly, a little more smoothly, I should say. Now, you have a song coming out, or a song did come out recently. Yeah. What's that moment like, waiting for your song to come out, seeing the reaction of people, your fans, everyone's starting to wait the anticipation, and then it finally gets released. What's that moment like for you? Well, I, I'll be honest, it's exciting and nerve-wracking, too, because you don't know if people are going to respond. And you, know, you put all this time and you know, personal investment in recordings and you know, whatever promotion, you know, we're sending out to radio. And we can only do so much. There's, there's only so much, you know, you, know, you know, I'm personally competing with national artists with very large budgets. So then you got to figure out how can we do this at a, a, as a smaller level. You know, it's all this marketing stuff. And it's also like, I've invested so much time and money. I hope people like this because it's the best I ha have to offer. Uh, if they don't, I've got to deal with that you know, mentally and, and just keep moving and doing what I love to do. Um, luckily, this 
recent single, People We Are, it was written by uh, Cole Taylor and Kim, Kim Penns. And Cole Taylor has written some number ones for Jason Aldean and, and uh, Kenny Chesney and, and all of these amazing artists. And somehow I was in a position where I could record his song. Um, and it, so far it's been the best response we've had. Uh, we've had some decent responses, but right out of the gate, it was, it's really strong um, with you know, playlists on Spotify and, and different um, interviews for different uh, magazines or um, blogs or whatever it might be. So we're getting some good attention from the song. And when you have that kind of attention, you have to follow it up with something. So we're, you know, we're trying to find the next song and uh, we have a couple things in mind and it's really difficult right now to record. You know, I, I, and I like to, after years of doing recording up here, I found that my best situation uh, is to record in Nashville. Um, and I just recorded a song with a guy named Brandon Ray, who's a, an amazing artist, and he works with uh, uh, Keith Urban and, and uh, he's good friends with Bobby Bones. And so there's, there's that kind of professionalism brought to the table. But I recorded this at home in my little, you know, outdated studio with this, this you know, old but still decent mic. And we're, we're hoping that we can make that sound good. You know, so there's all these challenges and stresses uh, of trying to make things work. But the new singles, I'm just blessed to have it be as successful and, and liked as it is. And I'm just, just trying to do my best, you know, keep going. And People listening now or people watching this program, how can they listen? Where, where can they get the song? You know, how can they support Houston Bernard? Um, I mean, best thing to do really is to go to my website, HoustonBernard.com, and you've got links to videos, you've got links to, to music. You can download it directly from me, or you can go to iTunes, Spotify, any store. You know, we distribute it out to everybody. Or just hit me up and say, hey, do you have a CD? I don't, I don't listen to digital music. I have a couple CDs still. <laughs> so we can do that for you too. That's awesome. We're actually very excited here at Medfield TV because we're kicking off a whole thing uh, with Houston Bernard. We saw some of your uh, artists. You actually reached out to us and said, hey, we're interested in maybe performing, doing anything like that. Like, what are you doing? And we said, you know what? We're going to do everything with Houston Bernard. <laughs> we think we're very excited about it. We're doing the Music Mondays. We uh, obviously supporting uh, any of your, your music that you have going on. Uh, we love, love what you're putting out there. Thank but you. the biggest thing too, obviously, we just, the whole reason why you're here is because we're doing the Houston Bernard Show. We're giving you a night talk show, the first one ever for Medfield TV. So excited to, to bring that out. What are you going to be bringing to the Houston Bernard Show? What can we expect? What, what are people going to be watching when they tune in? Well, i got to be honest, Brad. I, I'm pretty excited about this, and I, I really appreciate you... Um, you know, talking with me and helping me uh, uh, do this, and it was a great idea. And I, I never thought I would I would do something like this, but I, I know so many amazing artists from New England. I'm going to be showcasing them. I'll do a little bit of stuff myself. Um, we'll keep it simple. We'll try to keep it upbeat, and uh, you know, we're still discussing the the vibe, but it's basically going to be a fairly you know honky tonk late night show type of hangout. At the at the bar, kind of chat about some stuff and uh, you know share share some local music. Yeah, I definitely expect uh, some good laughs, some good times, and uh, <laughs> some great stories that you're going to be able to share with some of your local friends. And to be honest sure. with you, Medfield is a, a huge supporter of music. It's a it's a very music oriented town. They they love their. Uh, the whole community is very supportive of artists, so I'm really excited to bring this one to to our station, to our viewers, because I think it's one that they're going to really enjoy. And just, you know, I know we talked about it'll probably start with a lot of country music artists, but I think that we're open to to having all sorts of different artists on there. For sure. It's, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to be building a, a nice set place for you. It, it's going <laughs> to be really great. I'm so, excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. What what is it like to to have this promotion to to be building a brand behind yourself? Uh, what are you looking for out of? I know you talked about just having fun and getting your music out there, but like, what what are the are there like metrics and numbers that you're looking at? Like, what is it like behind the scenes for an artist as you're releasing a song? I I can't imagine the pressure of putting yourself out there like that. And then, what's the response like for you? Well, I mean, it's interesting. You know, you're always hoping for, for, for the best you can do, and then you're trying to grow. And my goal is just to get to a point where I can sustain myself in a, a career and, you know, 
not worry about <laughs> not worry about my bills as much. You know, I mean, just the basic baseline uh, uh, of success to be able to, to support myself and my family. So when I think about those types of things, it's how can I how can I do that? And yes, we're constantly looking at analytics and the, the marketing and. Uh, I'm working with my manager all the time. She's always saying, okay, you need to be working on these things. Your social media is this and this and that. I'm like, okay, and I got to do what? And I got to do this and I got to uh, what social media? Uh, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's, it's important stuff. And really, I just want to connect with people. I want to sing my songs. I want to, uh, I mean, it's, for me, like music is really just about connecting with people. And I love so many uh, artists. It doesn't matter what genre. I, I'm, I've done a lot of different genres of music myself. From big band music to you know coffee houses to rock and heavy music, electronic music, so I have a, a love of music. Um, I have a love of positivity and trying to lift people up. Um, I try to stay away from you know polarizing topics. What I, I like to focus on things that bring people together in good times, family, friends. I mean that's we all share that, and I'm hoping to to bring that to the show and, and uh, to lift people up. Houston, it's one of the things that I think resonated with me with your music was it is, it's just good times, it's fun. Um, like you said, bringing people together. You see that on Music Mondays. I think that you react to, to people joining and you're reacting to people uh, as they're commenting and stuff. It, it's really a, about having a good time. And that's, for me, one of the reasons why I felt good about bringing you in. And then the fact that you were actually willing to want to do a, a late night talk show and, and bringing the other guests on there. I think this is going to be an awesome show. It's going to be great for viewers to be able to take on and, and, and watch from home and stuff. So thank you so much for, for doing that with me. But again, what's the best way that people can hear your music? What's the best way that people can, can connect with Houston Bernard? Yeah, the best way is HoustonBernard.com on the website. And, and feel free to, I mean, just search any... Uh, any social media that you're on or or feel free to email me. I answer all my emails. So <laughs> HoustonBernard.com is the best spot. That's awesome. Houston, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I am sure that our viewer is going to be checking you out. Uh, we'll see a little uptick in the metrics as, <laughs> as, as Medfield starts viewing all the, uh, the, the things going on. But we are so excited to work with you. And thank you so much for watching this episode of A Discussion With today with my guest, Houston Bernard. And don't stop till it's done